Hello everyone, I'm Catechus, and today we will be starting a guided walkthrough for Legend of Mana. This game was originally released for PS1 back in 99-2000 era, and was instantly one of my favorites. Luckily for me, it was later ported to Switch, PC, and PS4 with widescreen, better graphics, some basic quality of life improvements, and of course those sweet, sweet trophies. One of the key features of this game that I really love is that it's very similar to one of those old choose-your-own-adventure books, with many smaller stories that end up to the same location, the Mana Tree. For this playthrough, I'll be using the PC version, because I gotta get them trophies. Additionally, I will be showing where to place land and when to do quests to get all of them in one run, as well as uh, filling out that darn cactus diary, because it is very, very easy to miss some. As well as some other mechanics that aren't really well explained, such as zone levels and how to learn skills. Now sit back and grab some snacks as we dive into one of my favorite games. Alright, for this playthrough, definitely going to use the English. Now, for this game, you can choose a gender between the male on the left and the female on the right. Honestly, it does nothing in the game, so whatever floats your boat, I'm going to pick the girl. It may look intimidating, but don't get overwhelmed by the sheer quantity of different weapons in this game. Pick whatever you think is cool. In the end, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't lock you into anything. You can always buy, make, or farm a different one from a different enemy. For this starting, I'm going to go with the one-handed sword. Because as a neat little bonus, the one-handed sword and one-handed axe, they can equip a shield as a sub-armor, and it'll actually show up. Alright. Now, gonna have to... Uh, make a name and luckily it gives us a lot of characters to use. For this I'm gonna go with Catechus. Forgot what the alphabet was for a second there. Alright. Now you also have to pick where you want your game to take place in the world map. This does actually have a pretty big impact on what you can and can't do with the layout of the game because throughout the game you're going to get little artifacts that you place around uh, slowly expanding the world and some can only be placed on water um, and because of that I'm going to pick this specific square here because there are only two that can be placed on water really maybe three I don't know but this is the one I like and that little symbol is really to show your overall pro uh, progress to the end of the game as you place artifacts and create land squares, like this mailbox here, which is your home, you also progress the story, and that little seed is going to sprout and grow into a giant tree, and then you can end the game. Now, for the home, I'm specifically going to place it third spot here from the left. So I'm going all the way to the bottom left corner and then over to this spot here. And now we're going to place it and watch a cool little scene without me talking.
All right, that was a cool scene. Not entirely sure what caused all that to uh, happen with the land, but whatever. Now we get to talk to the mana tree. Nine centuries ago, the mana tree burned to ashes. The power of mana lived on inside mana stones, enchanted instruments, and artifacts. Sages fought amongst themselves to gain control of the last remnants of mana. Then, after hundreds of years of war, as the power of mana began to wane, those who sought it grew scarce, and peace returned to the world. Well, that's nice. Henceforth, mankind grew afraid to desire, their hearts filled with empty emotions and grew estranged from my hands. They turned their gaze away from my infinite power and troubled themselves with petty disputes. That's not nice. Remember me. Need me. I can provide you with everything. I am love. Find me and walk beside me. Yeah, this is getting pretty deep. So yeah, that's the main overarching story of the game. Um, get the mana tree back? <laughs> I guess in so few words. Well, oh, thank God. Just seems like it was a fever dream. Nothing to worry about there. Alright, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so this is us. This is our character. This is our room. And it's um pretty freaking awesome. This is a pretty dope room. Now in our menus, we can equip things. Obviously, we don't really have anything to equip. We get our armor. We get three random sets of armor. But you can only equip one type of armor at a time. Doesn't matter. Skills are important and something the game does not go very well into describing. So right now you have abilities that you can do whenever you want in a fight just by pressing the uh, two buttons that are listed for it. And you start off with eight different um, abilities. However, you can learn more. To do so, you have to win fights with the right ones equipped. For instance, the first one that we can learn on my list here is grapple. To learn Grapple, we have to win 10 different fights. Six of those fights have to have Defend equipped. Ten of those fights have to have Push equipped. So I'm just going to do that now. Then we have Special Techniques and Magic. Uh, special Technique or ST, those are learned similar to abilities. However, there's an extra layer to that. Not only do you have to win so many fights with certain abilities equipped, but you also have to win so many fights with said weapon associated with the uh, ST. In this instance, we start with Aya Strike, so that's cool. Now, there are trophies to learn all of the special techniques. Don't put much stock into it. Say for Aya Strike, we needed to win 30 battles with Defend. That's not true, but let's just say. We don't need to do that when the sword is equipped to our character. Say we won 10 battles with defend equipped, then we came back with our sword equipped, and all, all we have to do is win 20 more battles, and that'll add up to 30. It's overly complicated. I will leave links down in the description of this on what you need to do for learning all the abilities and what you need to do for learning the... Uh, STs of the weapon you choose to use. And yes, you can learn all of them. That is a trophy, and it's gonna be a grind. Now, for magic, those require instruments that have been enchanted. We don't have any right now, so if we go to our magic, yeah, just empty. We can craft our own, similar to weapons, but that's gonna be later in the game. And honestly, magic sucks. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, one other thing that's not really explained very well is um, your character gains stats, and those are listed here. Like your power, dexterity, defense, magic, luck, charm, mind, and constitution. These will raise at a fixed level every time you level up, but when you have a weapons equipped, they'll fluctuate uh, which ones. Sword, one-handed sword is more evenly based, two-handed sword's more power based, and like staff is more magic based, so you'll raise that faster. Again, don't worry about it, it's way more complicated than it needs to be, and the game's not that hard, I'm just gonna say it. Alright, 
now to actually get into gameplay uh, another very important fact is this here is the cactus diary and this here will catalog every single side quest in the game and yeah there's a lot of them now the only way this gets filled out if you're going for that trophy is once you complete a quest you have to return home and talk to this cactus this uh, adorable little prickly thing here you have to specifically talk to him and then leave the room and he'll go write that quest in the diary however you cannot stack quests once you complete a quest if you start and complete another quest the first quest you completed will not make it to the diary there are missable quests because they only occur once uh, there is a new game plus where you get most of them but all of the crafting uh, monster corral and farming ones cannot be reobtained uh, you have to do a new playthrough and do all of them again so good luck all right let's head downstairs and check out the rest of this cozy ass house oh my god there's a bathroom the water closet not many games put bathrooms in their homes and i actually enjoy that that is a cool fireplace with multiple sides uh this here is a treasure chest free item 100 bucks i'll take it a nice little i don't know pantry i assume that's pantry and then this room over here is actually accessible this room houses all the encyclopedias of the game so catalogs everything from characters to lands artifacts monsters and techniques however there are four missing from this uh bookshelf and three of them we're gonna go pick up right now the fourth one we get as a reward for completing a quest which sucks so let's head out of here and head back outside where we can meet a very common character in this game this guy he is a sproutling yep like i said he is a sproutling <laughs> the world can be shaped by your imagination did you know that um sure well here you go there we go we got our first well i guess our second artifact color blocks that's the town of Domina. That's a very hub-centric town. Um, we will worry about that later. Now, down this path is the farming area, but we don't have access to it yet. And then around this path here is a the workshops. There are three workshops that we can get in here after completing some quests where we can forge our own weapons and armor. We can forge our own instruments for spells. And then we can forge our own little companion, a golem. It's not really worth it. It's all cool, but it's all very time consuming. And I'm not really going to invest too much time into it on the first playthrough because it's not really needed. This is going to be a pretty low key, relaxed playthrough. And then this here is the monster corral. And after we unlock it through a quest, we get to raise and level up our own little critters that we can take with us as companions. So that's pretty cool. But enough banter, because I'm running out of breath. Let's head outside and bring Domina back to the world. All right. Some things to note. Um, the top right, where it says Aura and has that symbol, that's your day cycle. So as you move around the map, each tile you move will change the day by one. And every time you enter and exit a map of any sort, that will also progress the day by one. Additionally, in the bottom left of the screen, you see the bunch of elements there. That is what element is associated with the specific tile you are on. And as you place land around a specific tile, the nearby land will also impact. Now, it's not really that important unless you're trying to grind specific monsters to capture or uh, elements to capture. But some quests require some maps to have specific elemental readings. And I will go over that with our specific map placement as we get there. So don't worry. So... For the color blocks, we're going to want to take those and we're going to want to build Domina directly to the northeast of our home. So right here. And yes, every single <laughs> artifact has a little animation for their towns. Okay, additionally, there is also a hidden mechanic for each zone called land level. 
In short, the higher the land level, the higher the level of mobs, better gear and shops, but most importantly, the higher rank of crafting materials. How this works is each land's level is calculated by horizontal distance from home, plus vertical distance from home, plus number of artifacts placed on the map. So in this case, Domina would be a land level of 3, because 0 horizontal, 1 vertical, 2nd artifact placed. Because our home is also considered an artifact. The gear that ranks up doesn't really matter, but materials for crafting are set as rank 1 is land level 0 to 10, rank 2 le land level 11 to 15, rank 3 16 to 24, and rank 4 is anything above 25. Material ranks 2 and 3 are what's most important to create some truly broken gear. However, I will not be doing this as it's truly not needed for the first playthrough, but there are some guides online to show how to forge them. It's really only fun when you have the um, nightmare difficulty mode unlocked when you're on New Game Plus. Okay, with all that out of the way, we can finally play the game. First thing we're going to do is grab three encyclopedias. So this is how most towns are set up, little instances, but you can walk in between them. You're probably going to hear this a lot, but I really like the art of this game. In this first area, we're going to ignore these guys. It's uh, one of the main stories, and it's kind of one of my favorites, the Jumi tribe. However, they're not going to be the ones we do first. Um, but we're going to watch this onion guy yell at the guy in the cape. Hey, man. At least give me your name. Uh, Alazul. Jeez, kids these days. <laughs> Jeez, he's a piece of work. Oh, you don't know the half of it, bud. So first thing we're going to want to do is follow that Onion Knight into this house here and pick up our first encyclopedia. We come in here and talk to the guy in the chair. His name is Mark. All we have to do is chat with him. So with this, we get the equipment encyclopedia. And that's automatically placed at our home. Otherwise, there's Tipo and the Onion Knight. Don't worry about them too much. If we come to the right and down, we can enter the item shop. And we can change our weapon if we wanted to um you can also buy a piece of armor okay let's buy a shield and i don't know some gauntlets why not we'll defend the top half now with that we can go in here and add our shield and our gauntlets now with this you can see here uh the different defenses the first three are against physical attacks. The last one is against magic. Don't stress too much about them. We're going to go over a way to kind of cheese fights. But when you're ready, head out. And we're going to pop into this room here. There's no encyclopedia, but we can talk to this bird and get her in the character dictionary. This is Yuka. And she owns this inn and we'll worry about her much later in the game. All right, now that we have that, we're gonna exit to the right of this area by the bar, and we're gonna loop around to this back right building. This is the Church of Mana with another character we can talk to. This is Inspector Boyd. He is also part of the Jumi quest, um, and he's kind of a nuisance, if you would. He's actually trying to help him. He's just really bad at it. But back in here, we can find the Reverend. This, uh, I don't know what to call this character. But he is a Reverend of the Mana Church. Just keep talking to him. Eventually, he'll notice we're here. Oh, please excuse me. I didn't see you there. I'm Reverend Novell. So, what would you like to know? You can go through all of these, but only one item can be attained by doing so. So we're going to talk specifically about the town. Then we're going to talk about the residents. Then we're going to talk about others. 
And then we're going to talk about Mimi. Ah, she's the fortune teller. Perfect. So, for some reason, after asking about Mimi, he's going to give us the produce encyclopedia. Which, again, filling in all these encyclopedia entries is a trophy. Oh, good luck. They're not really missable, but they are going to be a grind. So, hooray. <laughs> now that we have that, we actually have to go back to the world map and change the day one day. That will put the next character for the third encyclopedia on the map. Currently, she's not there. All right. As we can see, the day is now Jin. Doesn't matter, it just has to be the next day. Now we just want to run past the house on the PS1 where you could do multiplayer with someone else's memory card. Too bad it doesn't work anymore. And this will take us to the market. Now in here, at the bottom, in the purple dress, we're going to find Jennifer. She's, uh, Mark's wife, the one who gave us the equipment encyclopedia, but she is going to give us the item encyclopedia. Oh, and she thinks we're the bee's knees. Fantastic. There we go. Easy peasy. And this uh, character here with in the fruit basket, this is Mimi. She's the fortune teller. If you're ever stuck on a quest and not sure where to go because you put the game down for a while, just talk to her. You're going to have to pay her 10 bucks because she's saving for her retirement. <laughs> She'll give you a hint on what to do in a very strange way. Hashtag video game logic. It's all right. Oh. Yeah, if you get this, that, oh, you're just going to lose 10 bucks. <laughs> that means there's you're not really in the middle of anything, so there's nothing for her to tell you. All right, now we're going to start the first quest of the game in this walkthrough. Nicolo's Business Unusual. Now, to do this, we're going to want to head through this exit here in the main area, back to the marketplace, and we're going to want to talk to a rabbit guy here. His name is Nicolo, and it's this doofus here. My name's Nicolo. I'm a traveling merchant. But I have a problem. The highway is crawling with bandits. It's too dangerous to leave town, don't you think so? Uh, no, it's not dangerous at all, man. What are you talking about? How brave of you. Highwaymen are bad for business, after all. We should go teach those bandits a lesson. Once we're done, I'll make you rich. Um, yes, that sounds like a good idea. Spent most of my cash on gear I don't need. You're quite the mercenary. I like people who know the value of money. And there we go. Nicolo's business unusual. In doing so, we get to uh, have him as part of our team now. But first, I just need to stop by and see Tipo. I want you to come too. All right. Now, Nicolo's stats can be found here. Don't worry too much about his level. As you progress um, storylines, they actually raise in level on their own. However, he does have salesman's glove and merchant gear. It's kind of neat. He also has his own abilities, but every NPC that can join your team with their weapon has their own specific personal ability, like Nicolo's is a gift for you. I've never seen it, because it's completely random unless you have a player two helping you out on showing them off. Anyway, now that Nicolo is following us, we want to head back to the bar area, so we're going to want to exit south, and we're going to want to enter the bottom left room, where we got the equipment encyclopedia. Now in here, Tipo, the person Nicola wants to talk to, is actually the teapot in the background there hopping around. Why, if it ain't Nicolo. Hello, Gov. How have you been? I'm not entirely sure why they have such a cockney accent, but we're all going to suffer together. Got anything good on you? I do, as it happens. 
but it's just too good to let go. Oi, Nicolo, did you come here to wind me up? Um, dude, it's just junk anyway. Quiet, Onion. <laughs> this is it. It's a wheel I picked up on the highway. Hmm, it looks like a regular old wheel to me. You know, you're right. This is just an old wheel. Nothing special. Goodbye. Hang on, Gov. Even I could tell that ain't no regular wheel. I'll take it. With both hands. How much do you want for it? Fifty thousand dollars. Holy cow. Nicolo, you're trying to take advantage of me, collectionist. I... <laughs> Don't nothing cost that much. Blimey. <laughs> Bring me the fifty grand and you can have it. Until then, uh, I'll let Catechus use it. Well, isn't that lovely? There we go, we got the wheel. Nicolo, you're the bleeding worst. I'll get the money. Just let me have it. I'll be back. Bloody heartless you are. <laughs> yeah, he won't be back. We won't lose it. Nothing to worry about. But I am curious. How did Nicolo get the wheel in the first place if the highway isn't exactly existing right now. You, you know what? Video game logic. That's the answer. Video game logic. Now that we have this, though, we're going to head back out to the world map and place it. And then we're going to do the first quest. Hooray! Now, with the wheel, we're going to want to place this directly to the left of our house, right here. And this will open up the highway. Again, for, for reasons. Alright, now this is the first zone that we can enter in this playthrough with actual enemies. So this will be fun. We get, to, we get to learn how to fight. Yeah. By the way, um, I cannot stress how much I love these uh, little background maps. Like, holy crap. This is pretty... Now, the Onion Knight here, he will teach you how to fight if you want to talk to him. I recognize you. You're that stranger I met in Domina. Your name's, uh, Chumpy, right? Um, you can correct him or not. It doesn't matter. It just means a lot of characters are going to call you Chumpy until you do correct him. So, yeah, sure, I'm Chumpy. No way! So you're Chumpy? Wow! My dad told me all about you when I was a kid but I always thought it was just a bunch of tall tales. Okay, Chumpy, go ahead and ask me anything you want. Yeah, so he'll try to explain how combat works, probably just as bad as I tried explaining how abilities in combat works. So we're gonna skip that and we're gonna just do it. So if we head to the right and exit, get to the main road and our first set of combat here. Now, if you do want some ideas on things, you could press start and see what level and the name of your enemies. Additionally, while you're pressing start, if you press other buttons, it'll tell you what they do. Like I have left bumper on my controller set to Aya strike, and then triangle is power attack. Right now I have X is defend, A is push, and B is quick attack. Now, something you could do to quickly stun lock enemies is if you time your quick attack you could do three attacks in a row but then you have a pause well if you do just a half second slower you can stun lock your enemy like this and you don't pass the first or second swing and then they're just locked into an animation and that's how you cheese the game Power attack is does more damage, but it takes more time. Like, this is a power attack. You're stuck for a little bit. Something else to point out, you can't open an inventory and heal yourself. So your health up there by the percent number, the red bar and the percentage both say the same thing simultaneously for your health. So if that gets really low, you're stuck until you defeat an enemy and they drop a healing item. <laughs> Or you have the ability Crouch um, equipped to yourself. If you have Crouch, you can run to a corner, Crouch, and it will heal you quicker than normal over time, which is barely noticeable. 
Additionally, below the red bar is a blue bar. As you attack enemies, the blue bar will raise and fill. And as it fills up, that was a piece of candy, by the way. As the blue bar fills up, then you can use your special technique like Aya Strike. Which does also come with some immunity frames. Oh, here we have a Lullabud. They're good for farming because they'll drop seeds that you can use, you know, in, in your farm. So make sure to grab any bags that these plants drop. Just stunlock that bee. Should have probably mentioned it. The gems that are blue that get dropped. That's your XP for your character's levels. Try not to let your NPC grab them because they are all greedy little magpies and they don't need to level up. It's not worth it. Additionally, throughout the levels, you're going to find this little statue here. This is a save statue. Those are relics of the original PlayStation version. Now that we have the remaster, if we press start in the main area, we can just save literally whenever we want. So that's cool, too. But down here is another character that we can talk to. This is Dina. Hello, I'm Dina and I come from Gato. Did you come to see one of the wisdoms too? Wow, what cute ears. We were meant to be together. Keep it in your pants, bunny. Um, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> so in the game, there are very powerful beings called wisdoms and there's seven of them. One of them is in this area, and we'll get to them in the next episode as we try to get the farm. The one who's supposed to be near here is called Gaia the Earth, but I feel as though I shouldn't ask him the truth. Huh? Okay, be a chicken. Now at this uh, crossroad here, don't go south, that'll lead you to the wisdom. Instead, we're gonna take the northeast exit here after getting an ear of wheat. Now we're going to meet another new enemy. This guy, the Chobin Hood, he is really good for farming XP, and additionally he can drop various types of bows. For now we're going to get rid of the faff around here. Ah! Okay, stupid bow guy. Stop shooting my feet! What do I look like, a stormtrooper? Come on! So there we go, we're just going to stun lock him. I do like the afterglow effects as they swing. It's pretty cool. Look at all that experience points. Heck yeah. There we go, got 21. Pretty good this early stage. Now, if you wanna farm him a little bit, try to get a bow weapon, all you have to do is leave the screen to the left here and re-enter and all the enemies will respawn. That works pretty much on any enemy in every map. So have fun grinding. Oh look, another bee and more plants. Hooray. Ah. Oh, there we go. He's going to use one of his specials, Jawbreaker, and he actually landed it. Did a lot of damage. Usually they'll miss because they have a long wind-up period and your NPC companions don't really think ahead. But now we just want to keep going right and we'll eventually get to the area boss. First, we got to fight these spiny cones. They can drop magic hats that raise your magic defense, but mag enemies that use magic are pretty slim, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. But we it did drop an item, so maybe we got it. Jeez, they all dropped items. Oh, never mind. We just got their odd meat. Sounds, sounds delicious. All right, now that music means we're in the boss room. Heck yeah. Just gotta run forward and talk to these Chobins. Hey, 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 head over to cash, 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 cash. Uh, we're gonna give you some candy because it looks like you have a sugar addiction. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, these guys are crazy for money. I can't stand them. Yeah, pot talking to the kettle. Master, come and thrash this punk. 
<laughs> he defeated them. So this is the boss, the Mantis Ant. He's he's not that bad, but he does actually use special attacks and block like you saw there. But we can just stun lock him like so, <laughs> and there's not much he can really do. Oh, when they start to glow like that, they're going to use a special, so get away, and you'll most of the time miss it. It's that easy. Now that he has the stars, that's a good time to use your special because he can't move or block or anything. So that's Aya's strike. It was all right. Ooh, lightning kick. Let's see this. Dang, Nicolo, you scary. All right, now he died. Now, hopefully Nicolo doesn't steal all the experience. This isn't for you, man. There we go. Because we completed enough fights with the um, correct abilities equipped, defend and push, we both learned grapple and counterattack. Win win. Wonderful. I knew you could do it. Don't know why I was Fortnite running into that wall, but thank you. You really are something else. I'll make you rich. Just a moment. An iron pot, a green ball bun, and a taco bug. Normally I charge three grand for these, but you can have them for 300. What? You, uh, you don't have 300 bucks? Seriously? Turn out your pockets. <laughs> Literally, prove it. <laughs> oh my god, you don't have enough. But that's alright. This is a special one time only offer. <laughs> now we get them for free because we're broke. <laughs> Love it. Oh, and take these too. So, after you complete quests, you also get more artifacts from more zones. Here we get the flame, which is Gato, and the medallion, which is the jungle. What are you frowning at? Smile! Let the world know you're happy. After all, I'm a merchant. I want to make my customers happy. I enjoy life, and you should too. Well, adios. This, this this rabbit is weird. Smile! Dude, you are so weird. But there we go. Nicolo's business unusual. <laughs> the end. All right, now that we've completed the quest, before we do anything else, I'm always going to return home, and we're going to go talk to that darn cactus so he can write it in his journal. <laughs> Ah, home sweet home. Just gotta head upstairs, and hello, Cactus. You would not believe the people out in the world. Just gotta talk to him. Money crazy. Kid, you don't know the half of it. And then if you walk downstairs, yeah, he gets out of his pot. What the heck? Plants are weird. And there we go. We can click on it, and it'll actually give a small description. <laughs> My master beat banditos with a creature called Nicolo. Nicolo was scared of the banditos, but I'm scared to know what Nicolo is. <laughs> what could he possibly be? Greedy. That's what he is. He's greedy. Now, another thing you can do in your room is if you talk to your bed, you can save. It works as a save point, and that's what I'm going to do now because this episode has gone on long enough, and I think this is where we call it quits. So this has been part one of our Legend of Mana guided walkthrough, where I flooded your brain with uh, game knowledge. Stay tuned for the next episode as we start knocking off these quests one by one. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you like the episode, because it'll help the channel grow. Thanks.